Now that we have the general picture down in mind of what the graph of an exponential or a log function looks like, we want to start applying transformations to these graphs just like we've done with previous types of functions. We can start off with the general form of a function, which would be y equals some constant a times f of x minus b plus c, where a represents a vertical stretch being applied to our graph. Our value for b represents a horizontal shift to the right. And what we want to keep in mind is that if instead we had the expression x plus b, then that would be a shift to the left. And c, the constant at the end, represents our graph being shifted up by a specific number of units. And if instead our function ended with minus c, that would be a shift down of c units. We can also have an expression like y equals the opposite of some function. That would be a reflection over the x-axis. Or if we have y equals f of negative x, meaning the x in our function is being replaced with the opposite of x, then that would be a reflection over the y-axis. With that brief review, we want to go ahead and dive into looking at sketching graphs for translations of these functions. In example one, we have the function y equals 5 to the x power. This is an exponential function where a is equal to 5, and that value is clearly greater than 1. So we know that our, uh, our exponential function will be increasing over the entire domain. In this case, we have no um, transformations that are being applied, which tells us that we know our graph will pass through the point 0, 1, 1, 5, and negative 1, 1 fifth. And we also know that we have a horizontal asymptote represented by y equals 0. So we could go ahead and start off by plotting our point 0, 1. We could plot our point 1, 5, which would be somewhere above that. I'm not being too accurate here with my values since we're just sketching. And we'd have the point negative 1, 1 fifth, which would be close to this horizontal asymptote. And then we just connect those points in that pattern that we've seen exhibited by the graph of the exponential function. So really what we've graphed is just a basic exponential function with no transformations. Now in example two, we have y equals negative two to the x power. Uh, again, we can identify our value for a here is two, which is greater than one, meaning our graph will again be increasing. And what we have applied is something of the form y equals the opposite of f of x, meaning we have a reflection over the x-axis. Our graph isn't being translated up or down, so our horizontal asymptote represented by y equals 0 is still going to be in place. We know that originally our graph would have passed through the point 0, 1 and would have followed this increasing exponential pattern. Now since we have this reflection over the x-axis though, we know we're going to see that exact same behavior just mirrored across that line y equals 0. So our exponential function will actually look something like this, where again we're sketching and just using the fact that we know that original curve was increasing to get more or less that pattern. We could add specific points to give ourselves a little more definition here, but that serves as a sketch for that transformation. In example three, 
again, we have a base of a equal to 2. So we know our function is increasing. And we have a transformation of the form y equals f of negative x. So x in this case is replaced by the opposite of x. Our graph isn't being shifted up or down, so we can still sketch out that horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. We know that originally our graph would look something like this. But the fact that we have this y equals f of negative x form tells us that we're going to be reflecting that graph over the y-axis. So rather than this increasing curve, we're going to see a decreasing curve, which is just the mirror image of what we originally sketched out. Again, we could go back and add more points here. For instance, like we did in example one, we plotted those three specific points. But at this point, as long as we know the general shape that our exponential function is going to take, we can simply sketch out that curve.